Hi, it's Monica. I'm here in Hollywood with Kwanzaa Jones. Hi, everybody. Kwanzaa, you are such an inspiration to me and I'm sure to a lot of women out there. You're beautiful. Your music is beautiful. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming out here tonight. I want to talk to you about a lot of things, but uh, first, of, first of all, your music. Okay. Has music always been a big part of your life? A lot of things have been a big part of my life, but music definitely has. Actually, when I think about it, it's been around with me since I was young in terms of I played the violin, I played the flute, I played piano. So actually music and instruments and learning music very early on was a large part of my life. Singing was a part of it, but didn't come until a little bit later. Yeah. My parents were lawyers. My dad passed a couple years ago, but he was a lawyer, and my mom is a lawyer, so if hearing parents go back and forth <laughs> about legal precedents and things, it, it's a musical ring to it, but not music per se. My father played piano, so I got a lot from him there, and my mother played clarinet, and uh, my grand, well, great-grandmother played piano for a blues singer named Betsy Smith. And I know you went to Princeton, right? I did. There's a school there called the Woodrow Wilson School. And so think public policy, political science, communications, all wrapped up in one. And that was what the Woodrow Wilson School did. And I also got certificates in theater and, well, in African American studies, and I studied theater and dance as well, too. Music there I did more extracurricular. When I was in Princeton, I sang at the Apollo Theater, which is in New York City. And that was, for that time, that was my largest gig that I had done up until that point, so. What did it feel like to be on the stage at the Apollo? At the Apollo, at least during when I was performing, you have the opportunity, or rather, the audience has the opportunity to tell you how much they do not like your performance. In other words, if they don't like you, they can boo you and you can be escorted off the stage. So it really, for me, was an opportunity just, I'll say, to step up and make sure I did my homework, I did the rehearsing, I did the practicing, and I went in there not just saying I need to sing, but I need to put on a show. And so it was, it was good. It was an incredible experience, especially because there's, there's so much history at the Apollo in terms of the numbers of performers who have who have performed there. So I'm just happy to be now one of the many. Mm -hmm. I am. That's awesome. <laughs> Is it true that you climbed Mount Kilimanjaro? No. It's not true. <laughs> <laughs> it is true, actually. It is. And for me, Mount Kilimanjaro was incredible. For those who don't know, it's the highest mountain in Africa. It was really a very big difference in terms of just the ability to breathe when you're used yeah. to breathing at a much lower altitude and then you get up high and you're above the clouds and you're looking down and there are icebergs and, and glaciers and it's um, it was an experience. I mean, for me it ended up, the entire experience, I've been able to draw on so many times just even in the music industry, in my career and everything that I do, just the importance of there's a saying that goes, pole, pole, and that means slowly, slowly, one step at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's the way I got to the top of the mountain, because I did one of the more difficult routes, um, because I figured I may as well push myself and challenge myself, and that's when I really feel alive, when I'm yeah. pushing myself. Did, were you inspired to write music while you were climbing? Oh, absolutely. You know, I did. What's interesting is, while I was climbing and when I'm going through the whole process of thinking, I want to take it all in, I want to enjoy the moment, but I also don't want to be as conscious and aware of the pain, so what can I do to not think of all of this? Music is what did it for me. I wrote a song a day during the climb. Oh. Uh-huh, I did. And actually, I have what I call a concept album. It was a direct result had I not climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, that album never would have existed. And for me, it has songs like, uh, a song called To the Top. So, <laughs> and another one is called What If I Find Happiness. So it's almost like thinking, all right, why am I doing this? And what's the reason behind all of this? What's the motivation? And when I get to the top, what am I gonna find? What is it gonna be there? Aside from the clouds and aside from seeing the glaciers and things, what will I be changed? You know, will I be happy? Is it something that's gonna affect me that way? Uh, was that your album in 2005? Yes. That was it, <laughs> exactly. Well, 2005, 2006, exactly, because I did the climb in 05, 
By the time the album got released, it was 06, yeah. Okay, now I know you have a new album out. Yes. Um, and I want to know, like, what do you feel is, like, the evolution of you musically or as a person from your last album to your current album? Monica, that's a great <laughs> question. Um, anyone who's an artist, and whether it's music or writing or interviewing people, it's, it's all art. It's a form, and I think all of us try to find a way to grow within that art form. And for me, the evolution that I saw between that album and then the new album that's coming out is really taking it more from an introspective viewpoint to a, I say I go from, from realizing what it is and internalizing things and how it is I wanna express it to now sharing it with everyone. And that's what Supercharged is the name of the album and that's what Supercharged is about. It's how to live boldly, how to live confidently, how to be supercharged in your life and in your relationships and in everything that you do. And it isn't a message that is overly preaching, but it's more just saying there are no mistakes in life, meaning it's not a dress rehearsal. This is what you get unless you're going through the process and always trying to grow and expand and create in any industry it is, in anything you do, then then you're not really fully living. So that's that's my theory. <laughs> is there any song off Supercharge that's your personal favorite? Well, okay, I have two personal favorites. One of them is Think Again. And Think Again is one of the singles that's on the album that actually has been on the Billboard charts for uh, about three months. And Think Again, I really like it because it's almost so what you see is not always what you get. And it's not just a message for other people seeing you, what you see is what you get, but it's also to yourself that if you think that you're not able to do something, think again, try it, you might be able to. So think again definitely is. It's just, it, it's motivating to me and I hope it's motivating to other people as well too. And supercharged because, you know, we gotta get supercharged, that's it, it's really, uh, if I say supercharged, it's like an anthem. It's like, watch out now, watch out world, because I've got something to say, I've got something to share, and everyone does, so it's, it's a celebration. That's what I think it is. I know that you've been involved with a lot of charities. Yes. Um, and I wanna talk to you about the one called GEMS. Okay. Can, can you explain okay. what that's about? Yes. Okay, GEMS is Girls Educational and Mentoring Service, and Essentially what GEMS does is it tries to prevent the stateside trafficking, sex trafficking of young girls. And a lot of people think that the sex trade and the sex traffic, trafficking trade is something that does not happen in the United States. People think that it happens in countries, other places, far away, and that we are not impacted by it at all. But the fact is, we are. And for whatever reason that these girls get pulled into it, whether it's through force, whether it's through trying to help out family or, or various other reasons, just knowledge and awareness that, hey, open your eyes, it's here. And then the next steps of saying, if you have been a victim in this, it, who's had to get involved in this trade, there are ways to get out. There are ways for you to say, no, girls are not for sale. And as long as there's an understanding of that. As long as there's communication about it, as long as there's awareness and people talking about it, then it's something that things can be done. That's wonderful. What inspires you creatively? Oh, wow, lots of things. Um, I'd say the two biggest things that inspire me creatively, one is travel, and not just travel within the United States, but outside of the United States as well, too. And that leads me to the second thing that inspires me, which is people and life and their experiences. And one of the things, because I've traveled really extensively, is no, knowing that there's so many commonalities between all of us and that they're shared dreams and hopes and fears that all of us have. And music really is the instrument that can help bring that together and really connect all of us. And my music is inspired by other people and then I hope to be an inspiration by sharing some of the stories that I'm able to create and write and, and see through my music. Thank you so much for coming out here tonight. I love what it is you're doing and I hope you continue to do it because 
at the end of the day, your attitude makes a difference in terms of your actions, in terms of just your entire being. And if a smile can help brighten someone's day, if words can help do it, if even the feeling of optimism and positivity, then that's a great thing. So thank you for all that you're doing too. Thank you very much. Life is awesome, okay? <laughs> Don't forget that.